Gerbetella, what a ta 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 The orchestra likes you because you are inspiring. Those were the words music director James Levine used to congratulate the conductor Friedrich Heider upon his auspicious debut at New York's Metropolitan Opera with Verdi's Rigoletto in the fall of 2006. Levine's compliment exemplifies what today's leading orchestras around the world all admire about Friedrich Heider. With his vitality and knack for motivating his peers, the Austrian conductor with Italian roots transcends the shop burn cliché that pits conductor against orchestra. It is not simply the dynamic performances that make working with Haider a real treat, but also his intense and in-depth rehearsals. First he beats him down to the ground, and then uh, we come to, to Gustavo, and he wants to go out, and then there's no, rimani, no, stay. And he, he grabs him again, stay. And this is the chord, the second after G. Bah! You know, it, it is piano, but we said mezzo forte, and it has to have an attack. Not an accent, but an attack. Bah! Rimani. Friedrich Heider is considered one of the most flexible vocal conductors working in the world today. For him, the oft-lauded breathing and phrasing with the singer is a given, whereby his top priority is the characteristic way he configures a piece, his tireless search for expression. Uh, Später, wenn du sagst, Joma Korat, super Farbe, und jetzt uh, uh, nervöser und heftiger, Maniketa Koravi. Kannst du da so mehr so knacken? <laughs> this is wie immer eine Freude. As always, it is a pleasure. Maestro Haider plays the piano wonderfully, always knows inside and out whatever score we are working on, and immediately notices when a singer's expression in a phrase or aria just doesn't quite get there. And glaubt darin eine ein Ausdruck zu haben. We sometimes have to exaggerate like crazy so the audience understands what we are trying to do. And we singers will often think we're doing fine, but it turns out it's just not good enough. And Haider realizes that immediately. He's wonderful. He's absolutely extraordinary. He's, uh, he's, I've learned so much from working with him and doing this opera and um, um, the amount of knowledge and the amount of insight that, that he has given me, um, it's, it's truly extraordinary. So I'm, I'm very grateful. He's just persistent and he gives you that confidence to do better at all times. His musical talent is discovered in early childhood. He first learns the violin and sings in the boys' choir under Bernstein and Hanunkur. The Viennese painter and sculptor Ernst Fuchs becomes his mentor and exposes him to the depth and range that the art has to offer. The 10-year-old is overwhelmed by a world filled with fantasy and surrealism he never knew existed. It is also Ernst Fuchs who introduces Haider at this early stage in his life to the world of literature, philosophy and theatre.
Friedrich Haider continues his musical training in his hometown of Linz and meets an individual whom he considers to be one of the most influential sources in his life, Marta Picker. In my many years as a music instructor, Friedrich Haider was an exception. At the age of 14, he enrolled at the Bruckner Conservatory in Linz, where I instructed him in piano. It was immediately clear that he had a gift for grasping things exceptionally fast and also had enormous overall range. Yet the most striking thing about him was his receptiveness, his ability to relate to poetry and his quest to discover what could be lurking behind the notes as it were. He was already conducting at that time. He learned to apply his piano skills in order to create piano arrangements of the great operas and to read scores. Meanwhile, he also acquired the tools necessary for chamber music and to accompany leader. These were all virtues which, I believe, were of great benefit to his future career as a conductor. At the age of 20, he is admitted to the conductor class at the Vienna Academy of Music and is moved up to the second year's class after just a few weeks. In London, he receives a private lesson from Sir George Scholti. I think I learned more in those 50 minutes than in all the years of my musical training. Scholti was a volcano in private, just like he was while conducting. He sat down at the piano, put on a thick pair of horn-rimmed glasses and played from the orchestral score on the piano while I conducted him, so to speak. We worked through Don Juan by Richard Strauss, and he immediately informed me, harshly, though very precisely and analytically, where I had to improve and what I had to change. Watch out! You have to conduct the flutes more here. Give the violins a little more time. That advice turned out to be as good as gold later on when I was conducting. But the main thing I got out of that one hour was this kind of absoluteness he exuded, the fire he had burning in him for a work of art. I think if a conductor really possesses that fire, then most, if not all, the people around him will also become inflamed. And then, during a performance, the entire recital hall can go up in flames. Haider makes his professional debut with Richard Strauss at the Vienna Konzerthaus. As one critic writes, he is able to convey his fire to the orchestra. His career progresses in small steps, beginning as a repetiteur, something he views today as an indispensable requirement for his profession. Bob, can you get something really crazy going in your voice? Ah, <laughs> 